Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the difference between the hot, neutral, and ground wires, as well as the function of each with some worked examples. This video is for homes in North America. If you are outside this region, then you can still follow along, but your system will work and look a bit different, so do check out our other videos. Remember, electricity is dangerous and can be fatal. You should be qualified and competent to carry out any electrical work. Before we get into this video, there are three things I need you to remember. Number one, electricity will only flow in a complete circuit. If you come into contact with an electrical conductor, your body might complete the circuit. Number two is that electricity always tries to return to its source. And number three, electricity will take all available paths to complete a circuit, but it will take preference to a path with less resistance, and so more current is going to flow in that path. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the hot, neutral, and ground wires for a typical North American residential electrical circuit. First, we'll see a really simple circuit to understand how it works. Then we're going to apply this knowledge to a complex residential installation. When we look at a simple electrical circuit with just a battery and a lamp, we know that to turn the lamp on, we need to connect both ends of the wires to the terminals of the battery. Once we connect these wires, the circuit is now complete and electrons can flow from the negative through the lamp and then back to the positive terminal. So for the circuit to be complete, we need a wire to carry the electrons from the power supply and over to the light. This wire is our hot wire. Then we need to connect another wire from the lamp and back to the battery for the electrons to get back to their power supply or from their source. Now this wire is our neutral wire. The hot wire carries the electricity from the power supply and it will take this over to the load. The neutral wire carries the used electricity back to the power supply. If we look at a residential electrical system in North America, then we will find two hot wires, a neutral wire, and some ground wires. If you want to see in detail how this all works, then check out our video for that. Links in the video description below. Now, imagine for a second that the home's electrical system is connected to a battery, and we have just one hot wire and a neutral wire. As we saw with a simple circuit, for the light to turn on, we need a hot wire to supply the current to the load, and we need the neutral wire to return the current to the source. Electricity therefore flows through the hot, through the bus bar and the circuit breaker and into the light. It then travels back through the neutral and over to its electrical source. Now, of course, homes are not connected to batteries. They are connected to transformers. So we're going to replace the battery with a transformer. And there we go. We have a complete circuit. The electricity in this circuit is AC alternating current, which is different from the DC direct current, which we saw with the battery. With DC, the electrons flow directly from A to B in only one direction, much like the flow of water down a river. But in our homes, we have AC alternating current, which means the electrons alternate their direction between forwards and backwards, much like the tide of the sea. Now in North America, we have a split phase supply to most residential properties. So we have the two hot wires and one neutral wire. We simply have two 120 volt coils which are connected together in the transformer. The neutral is then connected to the center between the two coils. When we connect our multimeter between a hot and the neutral, then we're going to get a reading of around 120 volts. And we get the same reading for the other one. That's because we're only using half of the coil in the transformer. But then when we connect between the two hots, we get 240 volts because we're using the full length of the transformer coil. If you don't have a multimeter, I highly encourage you to get one. Links down below for which one to get and from where. Now, if we have a load on only one half of the coil, and the load is, for example, 20 amps, then the hot wire will carry 20 amps to the load, and the neutral wire will carry 20 amps back to the source. We can measure the current in a cable using a current clamp meter. Again, links down below for which one to get and from where. If you don't know what current or amps are, then check out our video on electrical current. Links for that in the video description below also. Now, if we have another load on our other half of the coil and the load is a different value, say for example, just 15 amps, then the neutral will only carry the difference between these two values back to the transformer or back to the electrical source. So in this case, one side we have 20 amps and the other side we have 15 amps. So the difference between these is five amps. So the neutral will carry five amps. Where does the rest of this go? Well, it will pass through the two hot wires. Now, this is what we have in most cases because there are multiple circuits with different loads in the residential property. 
However, if we had a load on both coils and they are of equal value, say for example 15 amps each, then there will be no current flowing in the neutral wire. So where is it going? Well, it's flowing back and forth on the two hot wires between the load and the source. That's because it's AC alternating current and the transformer is center tapped with a neutral. So while one half is moving forwards, the other half is moving backwards and the current will flow into the other circuit instead of back via the neutral. Hopefully that hasn't confused you too much. If it has, then don't worry about it too much for now. We're gonna cover that in a more advanced video. Okay, so the hot wires carry the electrical current from the supplier and over to the load. And the neutral wires carry the electrical current from the load and back to the supplier. So what does the ground wire do? The ground wire under normal operating conditions will not carry any electrical current. This wire will only carry electrical current in the event of a ground fault. Hopefully this wire will otherwise never ever be used at all in its entire life. It's just there for an emergency path for the electricity to get back to the power source instead of it passing through you. The ground wire in most cases is a bare copper wire. It's uninsulated, but in some cases it is covered with a green insulation. This wire has a very, very low resistance, so electricity will prefer to travel along it because it's easier and can get back quicker. Now, if we go back to the simple circuit with a battery and a lamp, if we now run another wire, we run this from the positive terminal over to the lamp and we connect this to the metal of the lamp holder, then this is effectively our ground wire. As you can see, it's not being used to carry electricity. If the hot wire touches the metal casing, then the electricity will now flow through the ground wire instead. If the hot wire is connected to both the neutral and the ground, then it will now flow through both wires back to the source. But as the ground wire has less resistance, then more current will flow through it. When electricity finds a way to leave its circuit and return to the source through a different way than its neutral wire, this is called a ground fault. Coming back to the house, the electricity flows through the hot wire and into the light and then back through the neutral. But if the hot touches the metal casing, then it will instead flow through the ground wire, back to the panel, through the bus bar, and then back to the transformer via the neutral wire. The ground wire has a very low resistance, so it causes a huge and instantaneous increase in current, which will trip the breaker. We therefore connect the ground wires to anything that could potentially become a potential path for electricity to leave its circuit, such as the metal pipes, the metal plates on the light switches and the outlets of their boxes. We also need to run one to the outlets because often our appliances are made of metal or they're covered with a metal casing, so things like washing machines and microwaves. When you look at a receptacle and plug, you'll see that there is a hot terminal, a neutral terminal and a ground terminal. The casing of something like a washing machine is connected to a ground wire in the lead, which goes to the plug, through the receptacle, and back to the panel to save you from an electric shock. Now, let's say you're outside with no shoes on and the ground or the soil is moist. If you touch a hot wire, you could complete the circuit and the current may pass through you to get back to the supply. In this case, the resistance is going to be very high, so the current might not be high enough to automatically flip the breaker and cut the power this will likely lead to the person's death. Luckily, we have the GFCI receptacle or the GFCI breaker. GFCI stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. We're going to look at a circuit breaker version, but essentially they're going to work the same. This GFCI breaker is going to be connected to both the hot and the neutral of the circuit, so we can monitor the wires and ensure that the current running in the hot wire of the circuit is equal to the current running in the neutral wire of the circuit. If the current is not equal in these two wires, then it's clearly flowing back to the source via another route, we then have a ground fault. The breaker will realize this and very quickly and automatically flip to cut the power and kill the circuit. Connected to the main panel, we will find a thick copper wire which leads out to a ground rod. The ground rod is buried into the ground outside near the property. This rod is not used for ground faults. Its purpose is to dissipate static electricity and external high voltages like lightning strikes. There is also a ground rod connected to the neutral at the transformer. Many people think that during a ground fault, electricity flows through their ground rod and into the earth. But remember, electricity tries to get back to its source. It doesn't just go into the earth. And as there is a ground rod at the transformer, then there is a potential path for the electricity to get back to the source. But this path will have a very high resistance or impedance. 
And as we know, electricity will take preference over the path with the least resistance. So as we already have a very low resistance ground wire, which provides a path directly back to the source, the ground fault is going to take this route instead. When it comes to lightning, the source of lightning is essentially the earth. So lightning is always trying to get back to its source, which is the earth. If lightning strikes the utility cables, it will flow along the wires to get to the ground rods of both the transformer and also your main panel. And it's going to do this to try and get back into the earth. If it wasn't for this, then it's going to blow all our circuits and it's going to cause house fires. Now, if the hot wire came into direct contact with the ground rod, then electricity will flow through the soil back to the transformer, but the resistance is very high, so the current will be low. This means the circuit breaker will not likely detect the fault and the circuit breaker will not automatically flip to cut the power. Okay guys, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then click on one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as theengineeringmindset.com.